But uh, I think, look, we've got, we've got a lot of stories in the news. I think we should just jump right in because we are about a week and a half away from this election. About 50 million people, that's my understanding, have already voted. These mm-hmm. people can't change their votes. And that's the, one of the craziest things. They changed the rules. They put up all this early voting. They got all this mail-in voting. I'm willing to bet there's a lot of people right now who are learning things they couldn't have. Like it was very, uh, uh, other, uh, 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 let me rephrase this. There's a lot of people who are just now learning things. Information that was probably suppressed. I bet there's a lot of people who watched that debate the other night. And when Donald Trump said, your family was making a ton of money off these deals, these, these interviews, you know, or the, these emails, these, these meetings, you know, people want to know your brother made millions in Iraq. Someone probably said, whoa, what is that? And they couldn't hear that story because Twitter and Facebook were actively censoring it. They may have already voted. And now they're sitting there saying, oh, no, I already voted for this guy. This is why censorship is so crazy. And it's going to have a huge impact in the next 10 or so days. So uh, we're here with Ryan Hartwig. You were a, a, a moderator, a content moderator for Facebook. Yeah. What, is, what did you do? What is that? Yeah, so as a content moderator, I mean, we we see the most vile things that you can imagine that are on the internet. So uh, there was a training for a month and they threw us on the production floor and you we would be seeing, you know, incest videos, uh, <sighs> snuff videos. Uh, I was working for a time the, the uh, Spanish queue in Latin America. So I'd see a lot of cartel violence, beheadings, wow. throat slittings, um, pornography. So everything that, that's horrible on the internet that's what I would take down and delete. Um, that, 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 yeah. Does that? So I, I've heard a lot of people get like PTSD from watching these videos all day, every day. I have to imagine that's messed up stuff. Huh? Yeah. Like there's uh, for a while, at the beginning in the Spanish queue, I'd get more like gross stuff, more graphic violence, more cartel violence. But towards the end, when I switched over to the North American side, I didn't think, I didn't get that as much. We would get some child pornography as well. But yeah, like, yeah. Some of my coworkers, I was just talking to one the other day who has like PTSD symptoms. But they didn't have counselors on site, counselors that would be coaching us and giving us techniques. So I don't feel like I'd really had too much PTSD. Most of the time I wasn't, I was, I didn't bring it home at night, but, but yeah, it is a tough job. Ian's messed up. He's gone. I'm Dude, I was going crazy. <laughs> like crazy. What was your schedule like? Um, so they had quite a few different shifts. Mine was mainly the day shift, but like, I'd hate to have like the night shift, like having to see that kind of stuff. Cause I think your brain's different, like during the night shift, how it interprets things. So but we had we had all shifts, yeah. So you would what would you do? Would you delete videos, delete posts, or what? Yeah, I would delete videos. I would delete groups, pages. I monitored the Mexican presidential election in 2018. Huh. So there was about 200 of us on the Spanish side, and we were monitoring the Mexican presidential election. But yeah, I could take down whole groups, pages, videos, posts, comments for Facebook and Instagram. First simple question: In your experience, having worked at this company, taking down groups, pages, videos, did you feel there was a political bias? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Against uh, uh, what political group? Uh, against conservatives. That's just that simple. Plain and simple. Like, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> there it yeah. is. I mean, the first year before the before the uh, Covington law firm did an audit against Facebook, they were blatant. Every time Trump gave a speech, even the State of the Union, they're like, "Hey guys, watch out for hate speech stemming from Trump." Wow. Every, everything he said, and then I mean, I added in by May of 2019, and we can go by the time go through the timeline at some point, but. But yeah, I mean, I had I made a list before I even decided to reach out to like journalists or Project Veritas. I made a list of about 20 examples of bias that I'd seen. And then that list just grew and grew. And so by the time I went public four months ago, I mean, the list is like I have 30 plus clear cut examples of bias. And this this is why Congressman Matt Gates, you know, could take the evidence I gave him and he was able to give that to the DOJ. And because of that, there's a criminal referral to the DOJ for Mark Zuckerberg. Criminal. Yeah, criminal oh, referral. Snap. This so is not we, civil. This is criminal. Why is it criminal? Because he this the, the that referral was for alleged perjury. Because oh, in tw- April wow. 2018, Zuckerberg testified that they do not censor political speech, Whoop. and they do. <laughs> they sure do. Yeah. So, what's an example of some? Did you did you ever personally remove American conservatives? Um. In a, yeah. I, so, for example, just a quick example, like. Um, there's a viral video in summer of 2018 where this Trump supporter got attacked in a restaurant. He was a kid, like 16 year old kid. Was that the splashed in the face thing? I th- like I a think drink? It might have been. Uh, yeah, I think he might have splashed his drink on him. And so Facebook said, "Hey, well, there was cursing in that video towards a minor, so delete the whole thing." And they even knew it was a viral video. They said, "Hey, we know this is a viral video showing a Trump supporter being attacked, but because there's cursing, delete the whole video." Which 
kind mm. of fits the policy. It's kind of a gray area in the policy. Like, we don't allow cursing at a minor, nor that's person to person. So if I'm on Facebook attacking a minor, cursing at the minor, that's different than just sharing a video with a neutral caption. And in some of those videos, the, the curse words were even bleeped out. Wow. So. So how would you describe yourself politically? Do, do, are you conservative? Yeah, I think more conservative, uh, more like libertarian. Yeah. So when you were there, how, well, actually, let me ask, how long were you, were you there for doing this job? Yeah, I was there for just under two years. Wow. You were yeah. there for a while. Yeah. Didn't it get to you? You're like, I'm deleting this very important stuff that like is important for people to know. Yeah, yeah it did get to me. And that's why I started making a list on, on my own. Like, hey, here's, here's some examples that I saw. But like the policy is very nuanced. So to the average person who's content moderator, it might not stick out. But it might not be too obvious. But like once you dig down into the policy, you're like, hey, this is baked into the cake. It's not just a couple of rogue moderators who are deleting Trump content. It's built into the policy. What about leftist content that you think should have been removed that they told you not to remove or allowed to stay? Do you see a lot of that? So, I, I don't know, uh, there's a few examples of that. I mean, I, obviously, the most clear cut example I have is there was a post in 2017, actually. I wasn't there at the time, but I, I could go back and see a post from 2017. And they're clearly saying that Antifa is not a hate organization. Hmm. But it's funny because in the post, they're like, hey, there's a bunch of protests being organized in like nine American cities. There are alleged ties to Antifa. Please remember that Antifa is not a hate organization. Wow. So, I mean, yeah, I can definitely see them um, protecting leftist viewpoints when it comes to protests, topless protests, when there's females protesting, or if there was a protest called uh, Grab Them by the Ballot that mm -hmm. showed a bunch of females naked protesting Trump. Uh, a plan words for the Grab Them by the... Right, right, the, right. Yeah, the, what tr <laughs> yeah, Trump said. Yeah. 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 And so... Um, that they, was allowed. They would allow it. So they make newsworthy exceptions whenever they want to change the policy at their whim. So are they... Are they? Do uh, you think they swung any elections? Do you think they swung 2018's midterms or what? The, 2018 was a trial run. So... Yeah, so Facebook told us, and the word on the street there at Facebook was, hey, you know, we brought all the content moderation to the U.S., which is very expensive, by the way. It was like a two hundred million dollar three year contract. So they brought they brought all these jobs to the U.S. so they could keep it closer on the on the election. And the the reason they gave was because Russia interfered in the twenty sixteen election. So that was the whole basis for them bringing thousands of jobs to the U.S. Was hey Russia interfered in twenty sixteen. We messed up. We're trying to fix this. But in twenty eighteen, yeah, we had a training deck just for the twenty eighteen midterms. Excuse me. Uh, we had, yeah, we had a training deck. So they said, hey, flag any content that's election related. If it meets certain criteria, flag it with a VI, which goes directly to the Facebook queue, to Facebook employees. So, and then just this past fall, they were like, they, they sent us a message saying, we urgently need visibility into conversations about the Democratic debates, the Democrat debates when, when the primaries. So even stuff that's not violating, they want to know what's going on. We're their eyes and ears. Because without us flagging trends, like I was flagging this past January and December, I was flagging like Boogaloo and Civil War was trending. So we, we flagged trends to them. And Facebook, Facebook so yeah. You're not just removing stuff. You're actually like scouting intel and giving them information on what people are talking about. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah. Alan, was, uh, Alan Bakari, uh, for those that aren't familiar, we had him on the show. He's a journalist, a tech, tech reporter for Breitbart, and he's been covering a lot of this. He mentioned there's this program where they're trying to pull people to the center. I, I, did you have you heard about this at all? I think I heard mention of it on the interview on Tuesday. So yeah. they're trying to pull people to the center. Yeah. Um, well, it sounds like it, you didn't come across anything like that in your in your work. Dick, actually, when I act, I talked to the policy manager Sean. I had a lot of conversations with him. He was in charge of of the. He was a cognizant employee, but he can make decisions for like the entire, uh, you know, all the staff at the Phoenix location. So he can make a decision for a thousand workers about the policy. And so I asked him about that and he's like, yeah, we try to like segregate people, like like-minded people together to prevent more. Yeah, that's what well, they're they're, they're, they're they're tribalizing people on purpose. Yeah. Why? He said like to prevent, I don't know, maybe fights, prevent conflict or whatnot. Because I raised up civil war to him, the trending civil war. This was during the <laughs> impeachment and yeah. people were talking about Boogaloo, which kind of means civil war. Right, right. And he's like, that's great. Like keep on sending me these jobs. Facebook really wants visibility and wants to know what's going on. He's like, if, if Facebook had identified some of these trends in 2016, then they would have been glad to know what the trends were in 2016 yeah. when Trump won. 
the, the, the thing I'm curious about when hearing, you know, Al Alum was saying that basically what they're trying to do is they were trying to figure out why people who are far right became more moderate, regular conservative or whatever. And they wanted to find whatever content they were viewing and give them more of it. So I'm wondering if did they ever come to you and say this content clearly breaks, breaks the rules? Like, I understand you mentioned the leftist protest, but I'm wondering if there was other examples where they said these things get a special exemption, like straight up told you don't get rid of this kind of content. Um, I'm trying to think of some examples like that, because I know I know they gave news over the exceptions, like like if you know there were celebs uh, opposing abortion in Alabama and they said something that violated the policy, then then Facebook gave them a pass. We can go back to that later if you'd like uh, mm -hmm. discussing abortion. But so they gave specific newsworthy exceptions to prom allow you know promotion of leftist ideologies. But as far as what you're saying, like, is there a type of content like, we're looking for? They they did say look for right wing extreme extremism globally that mm -hmm. might lead to violence. And they did call out Spain. They said, hey, in Spain there's a separatist movement, separatist nationalist movement involving with the Bosques. Look out for violence stemming from that. So in a way, they did try to like by asking the content moderators, like thousands of them, to look for certain things. Like we're gonna be, I mean, we we get bored. We see hundreds of posts a day. We probably do 100, 200 jobs a day. So by f feeding us information, by telling us to look for certain things, it it kind of uh, sways things a certain way. Were your coworkers uh, progressive or leftist or what? Some of them were, some of them were, were right wing, some of them were more conservative. There's two guys I worked with who were actually in the original video with Project Veritas, um, Jose Moreno and uh, his, his friend. And we, um, we had conversations and I sat with them towards the last couple months at work. Um, so there, I mean, there was a pretty diverse group of people, but um, it, all the leadership I noticed were more, were more that left leaning. Yeah. So Sean Browder, for example, was a huge Bernie Sanders supporter. The reason I ask is because, you know, when I worked for some of these media companies, it seems like their goal is to hire people who are progressive left leaning and then let them do their thing. You know, if they don't need to tell you to go after conservatives if you're already biased, you know. Yeah. So I, I, that, that's why I asked. But it doesn't seem like they were doing that. It doesn't seem like they were they were hiring people. Uh, you know, they're just hiring. It seemed like they were hiring regu hiring regular people. I think for promotions, I think they definitely did take that into account. And what's crazy too is the summer after I started that June or July, they actually made us link our personal Facebook accounts to continue working. Wow. Why? And some people were they tracking know. you? They, they said the excuse was so that we didn't accidentally action our friends' content. Like, what's the probability? <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So it freaked a lot of people out because a lot of people didn't have a Facebook account. But but yeah, I, I applied for a pro promotion a couple of times, never got it. I applied to the policy team with the same team with Sean Browder and I have a degree. And a lot of these people were young, like in the early 20s, fresh out of high school, didn't have a degree. So I think for promotions, they definitely did take um, ideology into account. Interesting. Do you feel like they, because of your politics or just because you didn't fit in with like their culture they, they didn't give you a promotion or they held you back or what yeah i think i think it's probably the politics about it um i mean they they t in the interviews they said hey as, as a part of the policy team you're going to be interfacing with the client a lot so i mean if you're if if you're a, a higher up if you're hiring someone for the policy team and you know they're going to be interacting a lot with a client why would you promote a a right-wing or conservative person if i mean if you're trying to protect it's yeah. It's, it's really similar to what I was told when I worked for Fusion, side with the audience. Look, the people who come to us are progressive, therefore we give them, you know, we want to give them what they want. And so that seems, seems to make sense. Yeah. Based on what you were doing, uh, I, mean, I asked you already, uh, do, you think they were, you, you, do you think they swung an election? Do you think what they did helped the Democrats win in the midterms in 2018? Yeah, definitely, 100%. I mean, they, just think about, it's, it's about gathering information and intel. So, I mean, you have, for example, the, just this just an example. This past fall, you had their Ukraine whistleblower, mm -hmm. and Facebook's guidance was to delete that. And I was on the front lines when that happened. Well, you you were at Facebook. Yeah. When so we can't say the Ukraine whistleblower's name on YouTube right now. Such nonsense. Yeah. This is this is active censorship. If we say this person's name, they will cut the feed. I have videos on YouTube that are in this weird state that doesn't exist anywhere else on YouTube. So what, what happens is if you break the rules on YouTube, they'll delete your post. If it's not a rule breaking thing, but it's like borderline and they're like, well, look, they'll do what's called forced private. 
Your video will, will change to private so only you can see it and you can't change it back. But you don't get a strike. It's not banned. It's just <laughs> one of the steps they have. What they did to my videos on the Ukraine whistleblower, this is the guy who started the whole impeachment process. They are almost just a graphic on the website. When yeah. I go into my videos, I have one video on my main channel, one on my second channel, Timcast and Timcast News. When I go into my videos, these, the, the, the videos are there. You can see them, but you can't click anything. Hmm. When, you, when the mouse goes over it, it doesn't change. You know, so you, weird. You know, weird. You, when, yeah. when you ho hover over a link, it like turns into a little finger about to click yeah. it. Nothing. Hmm. And I click and nothing happens. That's what they do. So when, when all this is going down, I went on Facebook and I immediately started, you know, posting this guy's name like crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, here's the crazy thing. I never got any warnings. I never got any like notifications. Yeah. The posts would just disappear. What? That was you. Yeah, that was us. So, 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 so I actually discovered it and it, we actually sent it to Facebook. So Facebook finalized the policy. So originally, and this goes back to 2018 because, you know, if, if Facebook can, essentially, that his name was a, was a Republican talking point. You know, Rand Paul tried to mention his name. It was on Fox News. It was, he yeah. said it in the Senate. Yeah, exactly. A senator named this guy because of his potential ties yep. to Democrats, his lawyers, the statements they made. And there was also a statement made about him that had nothing to do with impeachment or whistleblowing. Yeah. You could not say his name no matter what. There was a C-SPAN video. A senator, an American senator on the Senate floor said to the American people, this guy and this guy were overheard saying they wanted to remove Trump. Had nothing to do with the whistleblowing. That video got removed from YouTube. So, so really, it wasn't for to protect him as a whistleblower. It was, it was, it was deleting a Republican talking point. That's yep. what it was, plain and simple. So when we first discovered it, I ran across this job, and I was talking to my coworker Skyler about it, and we're like, "Hey, what should we do? This guy's, you know, a, a whistleblower or whatever." And so we raised it to our local policy team, and and we made they made an interim decision for the next six hours to delete it under our privacy policy because they thought that he was undercover law enforcement. And I have screenshots of that exact same policy. Wait, wait, they, they, they thought the whistleblower was an undercover law enforcement? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he literally worked for the CIA. Yeah. He wasn't undercover. No. And okay. so that was the initial decision from our local policy team. And then f six hours later, Facebook said, okay, we'll continue deleting it, but we're gonna delete it under this generic part of the policy called coordinating harm. So there's nothing in the wording of that policy at all that relates to whistleblowers. Uh, so it was just delete coordinating harm other. So it's just some generic part of it. But I have, you know, conversations. I was recording, filming at the time when I had those conversations with Skylar and my other coworkers. And I have a really good analysis of it written up. But yeah, so it's mind-blowing. you were deleting posts? I was deleting all day. So they feed them into our queue. So they do a proactive pull and they pull in so they can search whatever name it is. They pull it into our queue and all day I'd get like 100 jobs like that and just delete, delete. Did, was, did you have a touch screen? <laughs> no, it was- It's uh, your mouse. I do, so do you're literally like click, click. clicking, clicking, because oh. the post was probably crazy. Like people were probably saying this guy's name thousands of times per hour. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, yeah, and then we, we had shortcut keys, so it was like 277. Seven, seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh wow, just yeah. new. <laughs> so much easier. Wow. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. We do the show live. Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And we are also available on all podcast platforms for free. If you want to listen to us there, thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time.